As creatives on the go, we're always looking for solutions to staying light and nimble while retaining all the power and visual acuity we've come to love about our at-home setups. That's where the HP ZBook Ultra G1A comes in. I've had the pleasure of using this laptop for the last week, putting it through its paces, photo editing, video editing, and motion graphics. I'll give you the rundown on why this laptop is great for the Creative Pro, as well as show off some of the raw power inside this beast of a machine. So let's start off with Adobe Lightroom. The ZBook Ultra G1A is plenty powerful for cataloging, editing, and exporting your photos out of Lightroom, but I think there's one particular feature of this laptop that will be the crowning feature for creatives. So let's take a look and see what that might be. So one of the first things that I'm noticing about this laptop is its gorgeous display, which is helping bring to life the pictures in my catalog. The ZBook Ultra G1A comes with a 14 inch 2.8K 16 by 10 OLED display that can reach 400 nits of peak brightness and shows off rich and beautiful colors across 100% of the sRGB and DCI-3P color spectrum. And it's touch too. Let's quickly talk about what's powering the ZBook Ultra G1A. Inside is AMD's latest processor, the Ryzen AI Max Plus Pro 395, a 16-core 32-thread CPU designed to tackle any AI tasks. As for the GPU, we have an integrated Radeon 8060S with 32 gigabytes of VRAM, which is incredible for a laptop of this size, but it also means it can handle a lot of graphically intensive work target users will throw its way. The system is flush with memory coming in at a whopping 128 gigabytes of RAM. Thanks to the aforementioned CPU, the G1A can use up to 96 gigabytes of this system RAM, assignable as unified memory between the CPU and GPU, giving plenty of juice to run professional applications without lag. So if you love running multiple memory intensive programs at once, or you're a serial tab opener, it really doesn't get any better than this. All in all, this is a very solid offering from HP for those looking for nimble, powerful on-the-go solutions for creative workflows. So now we're gonna jump into Premiere Pro and I've got a project loaded up on here for an upcoming video that I'm working on for the Small Rig X Potato Jet tripod. And while this project isn't heavy, it's still using 4K C-Log2 HEVC footage, which is great for testing because this computer's GPU is hardware accelerated for HEVC, H.264, and the AV1 codex. So let's jump into it. We'll take a look and see how it plays back. I'm interested to see how that's gonna go, whether I can render quickly, what the color will look like. So let's jump into it. So I've got my timeline laid out here. It's a little over two minutes, almost two and a half minutes. And I haven't made any crazy adjustments to the color or anything. The only thing that I've done is modified the sequence to be in the color space C-Log 2 C gamut. So I'll go ahead and do some quick color adjustments to the A-Roll and get this looking a little bit better than what it does right now. So now that I've colored the A-Roll, looking back at it, playing it back, it looks great. The red in my shirt is popping, my hair, the camera, the tripod, since they're all dark, the shadows are rich, the blacks are deep. The green in the trees behind me looks really nice. It's not too overexposed, which is great. This OLED panel looks amazing. I said it in the Lightroom section, I'm saying it again, it's really that good. So if you're into video editing and photo work, having an OLED display is the way to go. So next, I'm gonna render the entire sequence just because I added the color, I wanna make sure that the playback is smooth and also kind of test the battery a little bit. I can see that we're at 45% at the moment and I'll render this, we'll let it go and we'll see how long that takes, what the battery looks like once it's finished. Looking at the timeline render, I can see that the frames are rendering at a blistering pace, it's really fast. That 128 gigs of RAM, the HEVC encoding and decoding is really putting to work this computer and Premiere. So the timeline rendered out within two minutes really fast. The battery life, while it went down 5%, that's not a huge deal, especially if you've got a place that you can top up while you're out. The battery life on this is really good though. I would highly recommend this laptop for if you're editing on the go. It's powerful, it's lightweight. You can't really get much better than that. So we're gonna jump into the motion graphics portion of this video using After Effects. Typically, this requires a little bit more power, especially for the rendering side. So just to be safe, we're gonna move inside so I can be tethered to a power source. Okay, so quick detour here to talk about a couple of HP's other offerings, which include the companion PC to the ZBook Ultra, the Z2 Mini G1A workstation, and the HP Series 7 Pro 31.5 inch 4K Thunderbolt 4 monitor. The Z2 Mini G1A uses the same AMD Ryzen processor as the ZBook Ultra, features 128 gigs of RAM, two terabytes of internal storage, and the same AMD Radeon 8060 as the ZBook Ultra with 40 graphics compute units. Designed for the power user in mind, the Z2 Mini G1A comes with a plethora of customized connections, more than I've seen on any machine this small. On the left side of the unit is a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, a 10 gigabit per second USB-A port, 
and a 10 gigabit per second USB-C port with alt display port mode. On the back are two times the mini display port 2.1s, two times USB-C Thunderbolt 4, two times USB-A 10 gigabit per second, one times 2.5 gigabit ethernet AMT, as well as the power input. There's also an easy access latch in case you need to open the unit. The Z2 Mini G1A is small and sleek, able to fit anywhere, whether it be mounted on top of a desk, under a desk, or behind a monitor. With the internal power supply and this case design, you can even put this in a rack. To pair with this Z2 Mini, HP have also released the HP Series 7 Pro 732PK, a 31.5-inch 4K Thunderbolt 4 monitor, offering HDR support, 60Hz refresh rate, and a multitude of display connections for hooking up all your external devices. This monitor covers 98% of the DCI-P3 color space, as well as 100% of the sRGB color space. Of course, the display itself is gorgeous, offering super rich colors so you will have no issues viewing your work as color accurately as possible. Now that we're back inside, let's jump into the After Effects portion of this video. For those who do heavy motion graphics work or really any kind of graphics intensive work, this computer in this configuration, the G1A with 128 gigabytes of RAM, is more than capable of powering through all of your favorite graphics programs. After Effects in particular should see a huge boost in performance whether you're caching or doing RAM playback thanks to the unified architecture of the system allowing you to use 96 gigabytes of that 128 gigabytes of RAM to store previews. So we're going to look at two projects in After Effects. One is the intro to motion graphics animation, it's 2D. Then we have another matrix code animation that heavily uses particle effects. So for this intro to motion graphics animation, it's not super heavy. None of the graphics are really intensive or, or large. I can scroll through and everything's loading in fine. There's a few masking elements, some position elements. It's not too intense on this, but I do wanna see how it's gonna play back and render. So let me just do that really quick. So overall playback is really smooth. Every animation's coming in nice and clean. There's no jitteriness. There's no stutters in the playback. Everything looks good. It's not a super heavy project. Again, like I said, it's an intro to motion graphics. It's 2D. None of the graphics are super heavy, but being able to play this back at full resolution without any issue is a great sign. I wanna try and push this system to its limits. So let's move over to the matrix code effect, which is gonna use the particle effect that we have in After Effects. And that one, it might give this a little test. So let's see. So I'm looking at this project and I can see that CC particle world is enabled. So let's go into actually the code rain PC horizontal so we can get it coming in from both sides of the frame. And I will hit preview on that. So now that I've let this play back for a little bit, we're at about almost four seconds of playback. There's no skip frames you can see. We're rendering at half resolution. The fans though, they are kicking in. With a system this small, that's kind of expected. Let's go ahead and render this out and see how long that will take. So after rendering this 10 second clip, it took about 32 to 33 minutes, which given how heavy the particle effects are, is not bad. I was honestly expecting it to be a lot worse. The HP ZBook Ultra G1A is a more than powerful laptop for the Creative Pro. With its AI powered CPU, souped up GPU and copious amounts of RAM, video editors, photo editors, graphic designers, and even 3D artists will find something to love with this laptop. So I'm Sydney with B&H and thanks for watching.